Hello. Um, this is a video on skepticism and standards of evidence that I'd intended to make for a while, but uh, a lot of things came up. I just bought a new car, and all the paperwork and red tape I had to go through on that sort of limited my time for making videos, but, oh, anyway, uh, oh, the car, uh, <laughs> Some people might want to know about the car. It's it's bright orange, and it's a Ferrari. See this key? Ferrari. Yeah. Okay. On on to the video. Oh, one more thing. My car can fly. It's a brand new model of Ferrari that can actually fly. The the only problem with having having a one of a kind flying Ferrari is that for the insurance. In, in order to get insurance at a halfway decent rate, I had to, I had to have a new security method, a, a new security mechanism installed in the car. It actually makes the car invisible to everybody but me. So it's kind of a pity I can't show the car off, but that's the way it goes, huh? Okay, on to the video. Actually, uh, I'll... I'll come clean here in case you didn't figure it out. I do not have a bright orange flying invisible Ferrari. But um I think that when I made the claim of buying a new car, I'm pretty sure most people I mean I haven't looked at the video yet, obviously, and there may have been something in my face that gave it away, but uh most people uh, being told that somebody had bought a new car would believe it immediately. There's nothing unusual about people buying new cars, so probably you believed it immediately, huh? And then the thing about the car being bright orange, probably the way I said it wasn't uh, the most convincing, but uh, uh, in fact we don't see too many bright orange cars on the road, but the claim of having a bright orange car still uh, s still doesn't bend, uh, still doesn't go outside the realm of possibility to an extent where most people would immediately call bullshit. Now when I get to saying I had a Ferrari though, uh, do I look like somebody who can afford a Ferrari? Uh, I'm working as an English teacher in Japan. Uh, and Ferraris are produced in the uh, in the thousands every year rather than the millions. So uh, <laughs> the prices are insane. I think I think they go into the millions, don't they? Millions of dollars. Uh, so probably that's the point when most people said, "Ah, bullshit." Then I get to having a flying Ferrari, and that completely takes the ridiculousness through the roof. Nobody believed that. Nobody believed that. I mean, you didn't believe the Ferrari, but a flying Ferrari, come on. If there were such a thing, you'd have read about it, right? That would have been huge news. Uh, and then... And then I get to the Ferrari being invisible. And... That just goes further to confirm that the, the claim is bullshit. You know, uh... It, it's obvious I, I was just uh, saying the car is invisible in order to not have to produce the car, in order to not have to show you my orange Far Ferrari and not show you uh, how it flies around. Okay, so the whole point of that, I'm sure you've probably figured it out by now, is that in our day-to-day -day lives, when we hear a claim, we assess it against a certain standard of, pro of probability. It's not a simple, it's not a simple measure of whether it's, uh, of whether it's, uh, possible that something could have happened or completely impossible that something could have happened. When I say that I bought a new car, it's a very probable kind of statement. I mean, why would somebody lie about that? It's the kind of thing you hear all the time, a completely mundane statement, and so you accept it without a second thought. It could be that a person has ulterior motives and is lying about that, but you attach a high level of probability to that person telling the truth. Um, 
Then there are claims that have somewhat less possibility but are still well within the realm of the mundane, like the car being orange. Uh, there, there aren't that many orange cars, but fine. It's a pretty mundane claim, pretty harmless to believe that claim, and so we do. Now when it comes to the Ferrari, though, uh, just uh, a pretty outstanding claim. When somebody says they have a Ferrari, you want to, you want you want them to come forth with the goods. And then we come to a what I think approximates a supernatural claim, the flying Ferrari. Uh, I mean, cars don't have wings, cars don't have any seemingly conceivable mechanism by which they would fly. So, so this is a really fantastic claim, and this is one that probably nobody would believe. And then the invisibility thing. I think I've kind of repeated myself here, but... Uh, okay, in our daily life, anyway, we use these standards of evidence. So, what I think is that we should examine our beliefs thoroughly to see if there are any beliefs to which we are not applying these same standards of evidence. Perhaps, perhaps somebody saw John Edward on TV and it sure looks convincing, sure looks like he was talking to the dead. Uh, people are uh, ooing and aahing at his seemingly wonderful accomplishments. What we need to do, though, is realize that talking to the dead is a very fantastic claim. And before we accept such a claim, we have to accept the uh, we have to accept other possibilities, such as the possibility that he's simply using stage techniques and clever cutting and so on to support the claim that he talks to the dead. Before we accept the fantastic claim, we have to consider whether more mundane claims are possible. And in my opinion, that's something that we should do throughout our lives. Thank you.